Hey guys, it's Enemy K Swimming Bird, and welcome to ARMS on the Nintendo Switch. This is a global test punch event. There's a bunch of these this weekend, so if you happen to miss any, please check out the video versions of these streams. And also, if you're interested in ARMS, I gotta mention, there are other videos you can check out to see the game, like my preview that I did of the full version, and we also did a stream for that. Nintendo was very kind, provided the uh, the full game for me to check out. So if you want to see other fighters like Bite and Bark, the robot duo, as well as uh, Kid Cobra, one of my favorites, then oop, <laughs> then definitely check that out. We got an error immediately, but we'll jump into another lobby. It's very quick to get into party match here. So we're gonna warm up. I think maybe with uh, with somebody a little bit quicker. Let's do Ribbon Girl. We haven't played too much of her, and I want to get some practice in with some of these quicker characters. I tend to play a little bit more defensively, so I gotta get in and uh, and use, you know, somebody like Ninjar or Ribbon Girl to give me practice with Kid Cobra when the full game is out, you know, to, to get in and be a little bit more aggressive. I might jump into another lobby here, because it looks like we're the odd man out, but we'll find another one in a second. There we go, she's singing. Ribbon Girl is a pop star <laughs> in the arms world, so her stage, if we run into that, the Ribbon uh, Arena, or Ribbon, I'm trying to remember, Ribbon State, there's a lot of uh, similar sound, you know, like Spring Gym and Ninja College and stuff to keep straight. Well, we're going to, the, speaking of Ninja College, we're going to fight the uh, the secret character that just popped up in the test fires this weekend. So you guys get to see this right off the bat, and it is possessing Twin Tell. This is uh, Headlock, so let me, let's see, a good Slapamander and a Sparky. Probably, probably would do well against him. We can try to stun him, or her, but it's gonna be a little difficult, so let's see. We're gonna get warmed up here with an intense fight to begin. See if we can get some good uh, stunning punches in. Maybe get a throw if we're lucky. Ooh, so the big thing you gotta worry about in this mode where we're all fighting this one person is looking out for uh, your, your buddies getting in there and hitting you on accident if they're not used to how the game you know plays against a, a single opponent. They might actually get in and uh, and hit you while you're trying to do stuff. Like I gotta look out and not accidentally punch at the uh, at my friends when they're in there. I've got my rush meter, so this is a good time to, uh, to use that. Nice. So Headlock here was trying to use his rush. Man, he's he's giving us a tough fight. He was trying to use his rush, but uh, there we go. But somebody knocked him out of it. I can heal all that damage that I just took. We are quick enough here. There we go. Now we're starting to move around. It takes a little bit to get warmed up in this game, especially with motion controls and when it's so early in the morning. But all these test punches, you know, right in a row within a few hours. So we're gonna try to do all of them as per the Splatoon setup with the uh, the test fires. Oh man. So sometimes I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to tell if uh, if it's headlock or my my buddy throwing out the oh jeez the uh, the throw. I wanted to make sure I'm smacking. Headlock to get them out of there. Oh, it's just down to me, and I don't know if I can do this on my own. Yeah, that is it. Headlock is so strong. Look at that damage. He does almost 500 with its uh, with rush mode. So a rough warm up. Some bad luck there, where we didn't do too well. But that is a boss character, so I think it's designed for you to to have a tough time against it. That's why you have three people against one. That's a level yeah level five out of seven. So on the tougher end. All right, and everyone is fighting Headlock. So let's, uh, I wanna do another costume for Ribbon Girl. This is probably the most popular costume I've seen for her when you realize how to switch between them. So you click in the left stick when you're selecting a character and push a direction, and that's how you pick a costume. And uh, yeah, the kind of dark, e like evil doppelganger of Ribbon Girl looking costume seems like she's uh, she's gonna be a popular one. Okay, we're going into Hoops. It's a Japanese player, and they are gonna, you know, try to dunk me, but I gotta dunk them before they can get me. There we go. If we can get in and uh, stun them enough to get a throw here. There we go. Three-point line. Will that count? We were kind of a little little too far. It didn't matter anyways, because we didn't get the dunk. Let's see if we can jump up and get the grab. Yeah. Typically, when you're about to get up, your opponent might go for a grab, so you want to make sure that you are... Uh, ready to jump over that and give them a grab. The special in this mode is pretty much a guarantee. I, I haven't ever seen it miss. It seems like a guaranteed uh, dunk. So you can just kind of wail on them. If you can actually hit them with it, then you get 
three points from far away. That's a good good technique to uh, to close out a match. Tried to tried to get her with the <laughs> with the shock bomb. Nope, she's going out of the way. This Min Min is gonna bump, bounce me in, but that's not gonna be enough because we beat her by three. There we go. Uh, so yeah, Ribbon Girl, getting used to her jumps. She has a bunch of jumps, I think four jumps she can do and you can dash around in the air. So she's a very aerial fighter, very good for this mode where it's all about grabs and uh, and getting those baskets. But we'll switch to, uh, to somebody else here. Let's play a bit of Spring Man because he is kind of one of the better base characters. He has a, a huge comeback factor when you uh, are starting to lose because when he gets down to the, his last fourth of health, he doesn't have to charge punches at all, so we can do a lot of damage very quickly to catch back up. Let's see, Twintel. I like the tri-bolt and the toaster. Try to cover, you know, kind of cross up, throw some to the one side, and then, you know, throw it out to the other to make sure that we're covering a wide range of, uh, there we go, of ground so that they can't escape stuff as easily. There we go, we're starting to hurt her arms, but you do have to be careful. This is the Ramen Bowl, Min Min stage, probably my favorite stage in the game. The music in this game, I didn't talk about it too much before, but it is really, really good. I love, it's the, I might be the same people that did the Mario Kart music, because it is mostly the same developers, but, uh, but yeah, the music in this game, I really love it. It's all very themed to the characters. Nice use of, uh, Twintel's aura there to slow down my grab and zip over to, uh, actually get me but we're gonna be okay here I had plenty of time to grab lots of space on the stage to move around so it's a little easier than most you can see every time I release a charge I can uh, oh, not timing it well enough here I can block a hit and that is Springman's normal you know ability outside of his his power to uh, get those increased you know quick charges when he's low on health so he's He's pretty good to start out as. He's not my favorite character by far. You know, I think I enjoy playing others a little more, but I think he is a good good starter character. You can see the Twintel fan in the back background getting a little sad there. We'll do one more with him before we switch to another character. And uh, he's got so many different cost yeah, different hairstyles where it seems like a lot of the characters change their hair pretty dramatically with the different skins. Look at all these Ribbon Girls and Min Min's. I could tell a lot of the characters like Min Min, yeah, and I think Min Min and Ninjara were the most popular in a lot of these test punches, and uh, I think Ribbon Girl overall is going to be super popular when the game comes out and people get to see how fast and mobile she really is, because she is really good. Uh, but at the same time, I, I haven't found a character that seems like they're not good in this game, like most of them have their strengths and, and weaknesses. Springman, I think if you're gonna play a character that has uh, the ability to power up their punches, Min Min here might be a better option for you once you get used to the game because she can use her dragon arm to actually uh, power up a little bit more consistently and, uh, and do those charges easier on her left arm. She does have that heavy mega, mega voltage. I can't remember the, uh, the electrified heavy arm's name, but that one you can punch through other punches as you saw before. Um, but yeah, she's a little bit more of an advanced spring man. She can still deflect stuff and she can charge up her stuff a little easier without having to be low on health. So I do like her. Uh, let's switch to her and then we can play a little around with her arms. It is the mega watt. There we go. So if you hit plus, you can see their arms. You can unlock every arm for every character. So you don't have to stick with the default ones. Right now in the demo, we only have access to the default ones because you can't use the get arms mode to unlock more stuff. But yeah, Ooh, looks like we might have a Ribbon Girl Min Min showdown here. Some people changing characters. You can see when that little anonymous person pops up, you know, on their icon that they're switching off characters. And uh, one more match with this group, and I think we're going to swap to another one, see if I can find some of you guys. If you hit the uh, the jump and dash buttons, you can do a little kind of weird little wobble and a, a little uh, toot <laughs> to, to go along with the beat or make weird music to kind of communicate. It's like playing Journey or something. Okay, so this is going to be, I think I might go with the Megawatt here because we got a heavy opponent, Mechanica, and a quick opponent, Ninjara. We've got our own Mechanica, though, so I can kind of get in and uh, and focus on one or the other here to do some 
good damage. There we go. I gotta be careful of Ninjara, though. He's over here now. She threw him. Oop, I gotta look out. I'll try to grab him. I'm gonna switch over opponents. So to switch, uh, switch who you're targeting, you hit up on the left control pad. It takes a bit to get used to. I'm trying to be careful here so I don't hit my own partner. Let's, uh, oop, nope, nope, nope. Gotta get out of the way. Yeah, you really don't want to be behind your partner, but sometimes they just walk in to where you're going. People are getting used to the game, obviously, because this is a demo, but you really do not want to be in, uh, oh man, I mixed up the Mechanicus. You really don't want to be between partners because, yeah, that's gonna happen, and then we're gonna get just bombarded here. If I'm not careful, yeah, they're gonna gang up on me. And they're hitting each other. Yeah, they're, they're learning. <laughs> I don't know if I can win this, actually, because there's so much going on. And he, yep, he got me. I think we we were just, like, getting pummeled by our own partners a lot there. Both teams were kind of scrambling to figure out what to do. But team battles, it's a whole other beast compared to one-on-one. -on -one. You, you, there's friendly fire, so you got to kind of stay out of each other's way. If you fall into somebody's rush attack, then you're going to have to deal with uh, with a lot of damage dealt out, you know, by sometimes by your teammate, so it can be very risky. And then, uh, I'm gonna actually find another lobby here. Um, but you're tethered together by that little bungee cord that you see between you and your, your friends, so you have to be mindful of that. It'll, it allows you to uh, stick close to them in a, you know, almost like a, a handicap that where you have to make sure you're not getting too far away or you're gonna get pulled back. And you, you gotta kind of coordinate. But, uh, but yeah, it can be a little tricky. I feel like team mode, it's going to take a, a bit of practice before it doesn't feel like this hectic, crazy battle. But it can be really fun. If you watch the uh, the preview video that I did with uh, the full version, I played Kid Cobra in a team match. That was really fun to, uh, to duck and dodge all, you know, use his dash to get under punches. Three Min Mins with three different colors. And the one Ribbon Girl that I was saying is really popular. Uh, the, the, the different costume for her. So this is skill shot. This is new for this test fire. It is a mode in, in the full game as well where you you kind of go around and hit these targets like the get arms mode, but you have to be mindful of uh, your opponents over there because you get points for hitting them. The most points you're going to get is if you hit a bunch of targets and then hit your opponent. So yeah, trying to do that while you're aiming around. It's, it's very frantic, kind of like team mode where you gotta be very mindful of what your opponents are doing, all the while uh, paying attention to all the stuff going on on the screen. So yeah, the, the thing I'm not doing as well here is hitting the, uh, the stuff immediately as it pops out. You gotta be ready when the targets are there to, uh, to just go crazy on them. Shouldn't be in the air as much as I am. There we go. We got a good lead going here, and then I can kind of focus on hitting them a bit to slow them down, although we don't want to hit all that. There we go. So yeah, there's there's the great way to rack up a combo, is to <laughs> throw Ribbon Curl and say, I'm the best girl here, Min Min. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the big way to get points is hit a bunch of targets in a row and then hit your opponent, and it gives you so many points. So that mode I mentioned when we, uh, we played it before, it's not my favorite for sure, but I... Uh, I do, I think I'm getting better at it as I get better aim and everything. Let's play with mechanic, oh wait, wrong person, went over. Let's play, there we go, I like this kind of cobalt blue Mechanica skin, and uh, she's very unique in that she doesn't have stretchy arms, you can see she doesn't have the swirly eyes either. She wasn't born with the arms ability, but her father works at the scrapyard in the, uh, in the arms world, and she built her own arm suit. This will be a good one, okay. So we're going up against the boss headlock, and we are going to have three different types of characters together. It's a level five again, but I think we can do better this time because I've got more going for us. I might use a homie to try to get in there and get some explosive damage. It's a big old spring man. He has a guardian shield like uh, our buddy uh, Helix, so i got to be careful about that. There we go. Ooh, that's when you want to grab when his arms are, uh, are hurt there. I'm trying to make sure I'm charging up enough to get in. He's focused on me a little bit, so I gotta make sure he's... Oop, she's trying to get in and grab him when we get a chance. It's a little risky to grab in uh, in a team mode, too, because your opponent or your buddies are probably gonna just get in there and uh, and try to smack him, and then you get knocked out of it. I think we can get him. There we go. He got stunned and then grabbed out of a grab. Uh, Twintel's in a real bad spot here, because we can't use our rush when he's 
behind us. There we go. All right. Let's get in and uh, while she's doing that, I'll get in and do it as well. We get lots of damage going here. The missile that I'm using on my right arm, it actually homes in. It's called a homie because it homes in and you don't have to aim as well. So it's pretty good for when you're starting out, but that explosion does a good amount of damage as well. Kind of offset by the fact that you have to, you know, you don't have to aim. So they're trying to make it not necessarily the most powerful thing in the world. And oop, almost got him. Trying to get in here and get a grab. There we go. No one punched me. This team seems to do pretty well with not punching each other when we're <laughs> getting those grabs. I think people are learning and reacting pretty quickly here. We're going for a rush while he's right next to me. There we go. We got 10 seconds. We got to beat him quick here. Everyone just unload on him. <laughs> if we don't win, then uh, he wins. So we got to do this by default here. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, so Headlock wins if he has any health left after. Even though we were doing really good, we ran out of time. And look at him, he's so happy floating around there. He kind of reminds me of like Galactus or something. There's a whole whole uh, vibe of, it's kind of like the, uh, like a Japanese lens on Western superheroes. Like we have a lot of different kind of superhero looking designs in this game. It feels a little bit like Big Hero 6 or My Hero Academia, if you watch that show. I think that the whole style is a good, blend of other things that the developers are probably into. I think a little bit of One Piece as well with the stretchy arms. Okay, I'm switching over to the Whammer because I feel like the uh, this is a good one to use against somebody with lighter arms because all I have to do really is uh, make sure I have that in, uh, in going out when someone is, ooh, this person knows what they're doing a little bit better. Um, have that Whammer going out when they throw out their basic arms and then I'll just hit through it, but it can be tough to aim the right way. I'm trying to get my throws going, but a little inconsistent with that. There we go. Let's see if we can get him to go where we want. Nope. Ah, gotta look out for Ninjar, because he's very grab heavy. He's gonna go in and use that on me. If I'm not cautious, that's what I wanted to do. So the throws can be very, very uh, scary in this game, but the big counter to them is just throwing out a punch to uh, to make sure you are... Oh, so this is where he kind of shines. Yep, there we go. Throwing out a punch will just knock a grab out of the way, so you gotta use that to your advantage to make sure you... Uh, there we go. Make sure you're, uh, you're just kind of knocking those and not being too afraid of the grabs. Didn't have time to get my guard. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have thrown both out there, but maybe we can get him with ours. There we go, and that is probably just about it for Ninjara. He, he did, there we go, yeah. That was a very close match. I have to give props to that player because he was super aggressive. But I managed to back him into a corner. He got afraid of that shock bomb, but hit him with the whammer. Look at the, the fans of Mechanica seem very devoted because they make those huge robot suit cosplays to wear into matches. Let's play a little bit of Master Mummy while we're while we're on the uh, the heavy fighters here. And then we'll do some Ninjara because I, yeah, I feel like he is really fun to play as. He's got that advantage of whenever you shield, he will just poof, you know, ninja smoke out of the way to, uh, to dodge stuff. But that can really work against him if somebody's using a rush attack. Like I, I was able to catch that Ninjara in my special. And you can, yeah, have that backfire a little bit. Okay, so we got a green ribbon girl. Let's see. This is one of the times when you might want to double up on arms and just go crazy with the retorture because it's so hard to dodge all those shots. But I'm going to use the phoenix because I think having a bit more of a damaging uh, bird is going to be cooler. There we go. I love if, if we get a rush attack with the phoenix. That's probably my favorite rush uh, animation is the, the bird-based arms because it just flies everywhere and looks super cool. I'm gonna focus on Ninjara here. So Master Mummy is a very grab-heavy character. If you wanna get good damage, you can get a lot of grabs with him if you're, you know, timing him right. And then that'll just really mess up your opponents because he does 200 damage per grab. I'm gonna go with my special rush here so you guys can see the bird flying everywhere. There it goes. I love that. Um, let's see if we can get a grab, though, while they're distracted. Oh, I pulled myself into the shock bomb, but we're okay. They're almost gone. One grab on these guys will do them in, and I have plenty of health, but I can also block to, uh, oh, 
Help me! <laughs> They're doing some damage. Yeah, they, they caught me in the grab. There we go, knock her out of it. Can we get a grab on Ninjara to finish? Gotta do a wider grab, and that should be it. Yeah, yeah, look at that, 200. Master Mummy, his, uh, his kind of hidden feature is that if you guard for long, you know, a couple seconds, he will start healing 10 HP per tick, and he'll keep healing a little bit faster as you hold your guard longer, but that means you're real vulnerable to be thrown as well, because, you know, throws counter grabs, punches counter throws, and, uh, or sorry, throws counter uh, shields, and uh, punches counter throws, and then shields counter, counter punches, so it's a little rock, paper, scissors thing. We're doing one more as Master Mummy here on accident, but that's okay. Uh, let me show you the, the usually you don't want to double up on arms, but I feel like these, uh, the retorture is, uh, the, the other one too that has electricity is really good because you can throw out so much stuff that it can be very tough for your opponent to really dodge all the hits that are going out there. Because look at that, it's like, you know, if you're not using, uh, using your, your guard well enough, then you're gonna have to deal with all these shots being thrown out at you. Oh got a grab on me. So Ninjara, most of the characters, the standard grab damage is uh, is just 150, but like I mentioned, Master Mummy does... Oh, I jumped right into that. Uh, Master Mummy does 200, so his grabs are even more powerful than most of the characters. But still, no matter, you know, what the size of your character, if your opponent can punch your grab out of the air, then uh, you're not gonna be able to land it. But here we go. Bam! Right in the middle of the ramen bowl. I'm gonna throw my rush out here and look at all that damage you can real, really juggle him with the rush attacks if you're timing it right and he's only got a little HP left because he's oop, there we go I knocked him out of that grab he's he only had a, a little bit because I was healing so we got some of that back but yeah the heavy characters if you're starting out something uh, something you might want to try is at least playing one of them maybe Mechanica because she's a bit more mobile and uh, even if you feel like the heavy characters are slower seeming their big benefit is that they do not flinch when they're hit with uh, with lighter attacks. So it is a uh, it's like super armor in most fighting games, where like Little Mac and Smash Brothers, where you will still take the damage, but you won't get knocked over by certain attacks. So he's uh, he's pretty good at keeping. Let's see, we got Master Mummy here. So this buff, this might be able to help me counter some of those bigger punches because I can pump it up by charging it. But yeah, be, being able to not get knocked over unless you are uh, are dealing with a charged punch is very, very useful because you can keep your, your attacks going. Let's see if we can get a grab here. There we go. Yank him right away from his partner. And if you get grabbed when you're in a team battle, you have to deal with your, uh, your you know, buddy taking some damage too. Not quite as much as you would take. But it still is a, uh, it's not a negligible amount of damage. Like, you have to be careful about that. This Master Mummy seems like they know what they're doing. Maybe I'll finish with a rush attack. That was so quick. Man, that Master Mummy really got in there and did a lot of damage. I barely took any. He was protecting me pretty well. <laughs> well there we go. That was so fast. The, uh, yeah, Ninjara, I feel like he's, he's definitely one of the first characters that uh, would be a little easier to pick up and play because of how fast he is and his his just kind of passive abilities to dip around when you're guarding. He doesn't take chip damage because he always poofs out of a guard to move around. <laughs> That's really good to counter if you, you know, you're blocking something like a, a rush attack. You can hit there, you know, dunk out, duck out of the way and then hit them with a punch to stop that rush attack if you're brave enough. And then, yeah, he's really good in hoops too because of his grabs. But also, if we're in the air, I'll have to show you guys, he can... He can kind of poof around and uh, and use that ancient ninpo magic to uh, to do some good stuff. Let's see. So I think the buff the buff uh, is pretty good because it does have that extra ability of when it's charged, it counts as a heavier punch than uh, than normal. But whoop, dodge the. Uh, I kind of was trying to predict where he would go with that throw. But yeah, this uh, this punch, if I can time it right, should be able to slow her down enough to get a good grab, and ooh, nice, so Twintel there used her Thunderbird to stun me, you saw my arms actually broke and had that, uh, the exclamation marks on them showing that 
they were stunned so she could have gotten a good grab on me there. There we go. Okay, we're dunking from behind the hoop, but he's a ninja. He can get around the side. HP does not matter in this mode, but hitting still does because you want to be able to stun your opponent long enough to get a good grab. But there you go. When I'm in the air, I can kind of zip around. This is going to gonna be close here if we... Yep, we're going to tie up, and then there we go. We got both got hit. Will I recover faster? I'm going to go for a rush and hit through because this is a guaranteed three points at the buzzer. There we go. I had a lead anyways, but I knew to time that rush right at the last second to try to ensure that we got it. If she had hit me with that, then I would have I would have had that situation and she would have passed me in points, but we managed to, to survive there. I feel like I, I feel a little bad about having more playtime experience compared to some of the people playing, so but when, I, when someone gives me a, a, you know, a good fight, then I'm like, oh man, these people are adapting super quick, and it's going to be scary when the game comes out and they have all the time they want to practice, because right now, people don't have as much time to, to try it with the limited test punches. They are testing out, you know, just like with Splatoon, they're testing out the servers, stress testing stuff, and uh, giving people a chance to try the game while they're at it. Okay, so Twintel, I really like her Chilla glove, because it does freeze your opponent, which will slow them down enough for you to get more hits. But the Thunderbird is the electric version of that Phoenix we saw earlier on Master Mummy. All right, we gotta be careful here, because uh, this is a heavy headlock with Mechanica. Try to get in here and get some damage, but it's gonna be tough. So yeah, whenever you see those exclamation marks, that's usually when you want to grab with most characters. But with headlock, you do have to be mindful. That didn't hit my partner. With Headlock, you do have to be mindful that uh, there are more arms on this character. You know, they get those extra extra arms, so they might not be fully out of it. All right, let's see if we can maneuver in well enough. Man, I'm having a rough time here. And there's a bomb. The fire bombs do so much damage. And this is when I want to try to rush. Oh, man, I got knocked out of it. I don't think we're going to be able to do this one, because we got to do a lot of damage to Headlock here if we're going to get it you know, get the victory. This is really the best time to, yeah, there you go. When you get behind Headlock, if they're focused on someone else, then that is the best time to get in there and get extra damage. We do have our rushes building up. Don't want to be behind my opponent, my teammates. There we go. Oh, gotta look out. Yeah, trying to, I gotta get close enough to actually get a grab off. And beware, because Headlock is about to get their special. 20 seconds left. See if we can throw this out and double rush attack this guy. There we go, juggled for 600 damage together. We could do this if we're quick enough, but okay, Headlock's got their uh, rush attack slowing down their arms by using Twintel's power. Oh, one, one grab or something will do it. No, ah, uh, so close. Should have just gone in with some punches, but I was trying to finish. That grab was so close to getting him. But yeah, any little bit of health. <laughs> And headlock rubs it in, but we still got, you know, some coins. That's that's one of the benefits, I think, of jumping into this party mode where you get to uh, play these quicker matches is you get coins quite a bit faster than just playing the game in a normal style and playing longer matches like a best of two. Party mode is these kind of random, you know, battles that we're having here, but the uh, the coins you get out of it are pretty... Pretty good, like we just jumped in this lobby not too long ago. I got 23 already. You only need 30 to do a quick quick uh, run at the arms getter to get more arms unlocked for your character. All right, this is when I might want to get a parasol because that can kind of deflect some stuff. It has a wind effect as well. So I'm really gonna try my luck at uh, seeing if we can slow down Master Mummy here and not let him guard too much because if he does guard, then uh, you're gonna be able to heal, so I gotta be careful. Ooh, man, dashed right into that grab. I have that uh, that weird thing that I do in geez, in Mario Kart way too often too, where uh, I will dash into or like ride into items. Sometimes I'll see it. Yeah, it's, it's a weird like thing where you're trying to avoid something, but you see it, and it's almost like you mix up your your uh, desire to run into collectible, you know, like good things, like trying to pick up an item in Mario Kart obviously is good, but sometimes I'll see a item box and then go into that, ooh, or I, not, you know, not an item box, and that is going to be it, man, this Master Mummy was real aggressive, used a lot of grabs, I should have been more, you know, reactive with punching those, but he, uh, he did not give me much chance 
to really counter. I had my rush, but yeah, I went right into his grab at the end. That was a good, good Master Mummy that already has adapted really well to the game. Probably only played a handful of hours. I'm gonna do another one with Twintel here. Keep switching skins so you guys get to see all the different costumes. I want to rematch that Master Mummy, but I don't know if we're gonna get the chance. They typically tend to give you different opponents every time. So, uh, so yeah, now we're going up against Ribbon Girl. After Twintel, though, I'm gonna switch over to Helix, because I want to play a little bit more of him. I do need to practice, and this is a good chance to practice with a character that I'm not as used to, because most of the people aren't as used to playing the game, so it's kind of a good opportunity to, uh, to get some time in with a character I'm less experienced with. There we go. But yeah, Twintel, if you, you've noticed her ability to slow down time by now, I'm sure, by charging up your your dash. This is a quick ribbon girl. I gotta be careful around. Let's see if we can get her to uh, go into that. Nope. She's gonna be very tough to deal with. I'm throwing enough punches here where I can try to get... There we go. Get my rush going. Yeah, these ja and again with like with Splatoon, I noticed a lot of the Japanese players tend to be adapting very quickly and doing super well at the game. So I'm gonna have to keep up with them because they're already doing super. You know, I've had more play time, but I feel like they're gonna adapt very quickly and uh, still do well. All right. Yeah, this is trying to play more methodically and uh, actually. React to your opponent is the my natural inclination, you know, is to throw out punches whenever I have the opportunity. But you want to be, you know, guarding. You want to be ducking and diving enough to uh, to react and use your punches on, you know, a response to them. That I got real lucky that she didn't catch me with that rush. And then now we're in a position where I could kind of back off and win on health, which is the smarter way to go. But it's not as exciting. So we're gonna try to finish this and uh, do the damage we need to do to win. There we go. Uh, but yeah, punching first is usually not a good option unless you're far enough away to ensure that you can still react to their punches. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> I was going a little aggressive and then as I started to play a little bit more calm, started to react to her moves, I think I started to do better as well. So let's play some Helix. He is so weird. I don't know if he's great at hoops because he's a little slower, but he's got some really cool abilities, being able to stretch and charge his arms by holding jump. They'll just be instantly charged with that. He's got this crazy shield as one of his default arms. That's a little weird to uh, get used to, but he is, uh, he is such a strange character that I feel like I can't ignore him. I love his, uh, his design a lot, but you gotta be careful with using him because he's just gonna he's gonna make things tough to uh to learn the game a little bit early on because he is so strange i don't think he's a beginner character at all you know you want to make sure you have a good sense of the fundamentals before you get into him i feel like he's not great at hoops just you know starting out because of the fact that his uh oh, <laughs> his uh <laughs> goes right into a bomb his he, he can dodge grabs which is helpful but at the same time, yeah, his uh, his default arms, the one kind of extends longer and can give you trouble with uh, with getting it back in time to actually get it dunk. We're just going to get destroyed here. Might as well go for a rush while we're at it and uh, knock her in for a couple points. I don't think we're going to be able to do this, though. Nope. <laughs> so, yeah, his, uh, his kind of glooping and stretching is so odd to get used to. You want to hold dash to kind of get under grabs and move around, but he is very slow, so I think they had to had to balance out his extra abilities. I think he'll do a little better in a fight, though, rather than hoops, because, yeah, grabbing not necessarily his forte. Let's, uh, let's switch to the blue one that I put in the thumbnail. I like this color a lot. So he's got very, very uh, striking, weird flubber goo body, and, of course, he looks like the crazy... Crazy waving arms guy from uh, car parking lot, you know, things like that. The inflatable tube man. Let's do some ice dragon. Try to slow her down. She's going to be going a little slow at times anyways because of her ability. But uh, we're going to try to get... There we go. So he does 150. That's, you know, that's the standard grab damage. We're on Helix's stage, which is good. And that ice dragon freezes them well enough to, uh, to allow you to get those grabs a little easier. So he is, uh, you know, 
he's definitely got his strengths. I think he is going to be, as the game goes on, if it, you know, finds an audience competitively, he is probably going to be one of the better characters. Just right now, when people are learning the game, he can be a bit tougher to get used to, so you've got to be careful with him. His ability to duck down under grabs is really useful on this stage, especially because you can, uh, you can use that in that middle section to actually be able to get in there and, oh, I think we got her. Uh, <laughs> countered rush with a rush. You can use that little part with the stairs to, to squish down and get under grabs a little easier than on most stages. So this stage, kind of designed for Helix. It is his, uh, his home turf, of course. So yeah, it's, it's a thing where he is, uh, he's going to be able to do a little better on there by ducking behind his buddies in the test tubes. And, uh, he, like, his family is all in there, but none of them were successful enough, so I feel like he's the only one that really survived the, uh, the experiments and all this. It's a little bit of a weird, dark backstory, like Mewtwo, or uh, in Pokemon, and stuff like that, but, but yeah, he's, uh, he's able to dip around stuff so much that any stage with an obstacle, like Mechanicus stage, the Scrapyard, or Helix's stage, the one we just saw there, the, the Arms Lab, that's a good one for him, because he's going to be able to use that for his advantage and kind of stretch to turn and punch and then hide behind stuff. All right, Wacky Inflatable Arms Filling Tube Man. Yeah, that is actually, if you look at the wiki for that, the uh, the weird tube guy, that is, I think, like the official name of, <laughs> of the weird parking lot guys I was just talking about that Helix has a lot in common with. So this is a good time to, uh, to kind of get into a nice position to stretch and, oops, sorry, didn't mean to hit that ribbon girl there. This is a good time where I can actually show his stretching ability to get in and, uh, and try to hit with the blorbs here. So when you hit with a charged blorb, these giant punches, it will actually blind your opponent. You'll see a blorb on their head, like a little ball of goo, and that is, uh, that's a way to make sure, like a blooper in Mario Kart, that they can't really see what is, uh, what's going on. It's gonna be very tough with with uh, Headlock here to actually get that successfully. I do have my Rush. Okay, we'll let him do his. Try to push him into that. And then I'll throw mine out there. There we go, we got him. So yeah, Helix, very strange character. We'll do a couple more with him. <laughs> I do like his Blorbs, but I feel like, uh, depending on your play style, Helix's default arms are maybe not the best for a lot of people. The Guardian is so bizarre, it can block punches, but it also, has that that factor of uh, limiting whether you can grab or guard because your arm is extended all the time if you have that out there but it can really block stuff even your own hits you have to punch around your guardian shield let's see so uh, I want to get in with that master mummy again he's fighting another helix I probably should be using another character if we rematch him though I'd like to take him on with Mechanica or Min Min or something but in party mode this type of lobby it is kind of just you know whoever is uh, is there, you're going to get matched with. Let's see, what's a good one for her? See, I'm not a huge fan of the Guardian Shield, but let's try it out a little bit just to see if we can do a little better. His jump is so bizarre as well because you have to deal with the fact that he kind of stretches and, uh, and doesn't let go of the ground very easily. There we go. Yes, this is going to be tough. It's a little bit like we need to get in and do some grabs more. And, uh, oop. There we go. And look out for her. Oh, jeez, yeah. Because we're not going to get as much damage off of the dragon arm here. If we're not careful. There we go. Oh, no. Got to get in and get those grabs or we're going to get destroyed. Again, this character, I feel like, against most characters, you know, when you're starting out, he is not as strong for sure. And uh, there we go. Getting a lot of damage on the rush, at least. But yeah, he's definitely got his issues. With, uh, with being able to react faster. You have to play somewhat defensively with him. She's gonna move in here now that she sees that I'm backed into a corner, so I do have to be careful. There we go. I try to be very aggressive with my dragon and hit her. Oh, nope, oh no, we're in trouble. Okay, that worked out sort of, but there we go, we managed to do it. So yeah, he is very, with this setup, with the ice dragon and the guardian, you're kind of defensive where you gotta put out that shield Try to block all the damage you can, and then hit him.
with the uh, the laser from far off. So if you do like playing a little more defensively and kind of at range, Helix might be the one to try. Let's do one more with him with the orange skin, and then we'll try somebody else. Oh no, three master mummies. We're going against the one guy, which you can tell knows a little bit more about the game because he, the guy that beat me with that master mummy, he's using an alternate skin. So he definitely uh, is pretty good at that. Now let's see, let's try a double ice dragon. This is going to be a crazy setup because we're going to have to stay at range. But Joker said uh, in the chat, you, you will lose. We actually survived and won that one. So that's, you know, believe in me, buddy. <laughs> Sometimes I'll win. Yeah. Oh, we got another master mummy that is, yeah, the one we're going against is that grab happy guy, and he's just going to go for crazy amounts of grabs, which I've seen people complain about in the test fire, like grabs are very strong if you know how to use them, so you do have to be careful of that. There we go. I need to be targeting him especially. Get him with a grab. <laughs> Throwing out tons of grabs is not, you know, the best thing to do in the world. Ah, and now he's just going to grab me like crazy, but maybe I can slow him down. Yeah, this is going to be very difficult for me to do almost anything. He's just gonna, you know, one guy's gonna grab me while the other guy does a rush attack, most likely. Try to get in and, nope, yeah. When it's one on two, it's um, it feels almost impossible to win, because they can just, no matter what you're doing, some, the other guy can, uh, can kind of just hit you out of it if you're grabbing them. All right, I'm gonna switch to someone else and hope we get this Master Mummy again, because I want to get my revenge. So let's go, I mentioned Min Min is one of my favorites. I think we can beat him with Min Min if we get matched up again. But it's all, you know, luck of the draw. You can tell he's got 61 of those arms, bucks, or whatever coins. He's fighting that other Master Mummy. And uh, you can tell he's a little more experienced, or he just adapted to the game a lot faster. I wonder if he does play other fighting games. But yeah, that was rough. My, my, my partner got taken out so quick, and then the, the dragons weren't helping me against such aggressive opponents. Let's, uh, yeah. I tend to like this setup with the ram the fire ram ram on the right arm and the dragon on the left. I'm on the green side here, which almost never happens because if you're playing on your own, you know, you typically are the orange team is the default. Try to get in here and get these. This is a good one for uh, making sure you get extra points on your opponent because you can throw that out there and hopefully hit them through it. Try to launch that over. There we go, yeah. So this again with target, with uh, skill shot rather, you gotta make sure you're throwing stuff out to uh, to hit your opponent while you're aiming for all these targets. There we go. Didn't hit her at the end there. I could have gotten more points. But the the thing I mentioned with skill shot before, it does. It's weird. It, it is so subtle, but it does noticeably slow down how fast you can uh, use your arms and get them back. It's like slightly slower than the normal game, I think, as a balance thing. But because of that, it just feels super awkward. It does help you with your aim, but it's definitely not my uh, not my favorite mode. The V-Ball is, uh, there's a volleyball mode that is also lower down in terms of the modes for me, but it is fun still. I think Bite and Bark are really good at that, which is kind of funny because they're from the beach and the volleyball game takes place there. Same with hoops. I like hoops a lot, though. I feel like hoops is the real standout of the special extra modes. So let's see. If you do have any uh, questions, let me know in the chat, because I want to, you know, I'll answer anything that you guys want to know about the full game as well. I, I can't reveal everything. You know, I don't want to spoil stuff, but be, if you have any questions about things that are not in the test punch, definitely let me know. We're getting down to the last... Uh, Handful of battles here. All right, and we got a level five helix headlock. So I'm gonna try to uh, kind of keep my distance and use my dragon to really rack up damage. Because so Min Min, I kind of explained it before, but her dragon arm, if you charge a dash, you can turn her left arm, her left noodle, into this dragon, and it is just a always charged punch for you. So it's very useful. And so yeah, somebody hit me out of my grab, so you gotta be careful when you're throwing that out. And there's a lot going on. I'm gonna add to this crazy mayhem here with my dragon arm. Look at all that damage we did. Let's see if we can hit that into him. Nope, I hit my own, <laughs> the own bomb that I went after. So yeah, headlock, uh, very crazy when you're all trying to do stuff to him. Someone didn't punch me there. But yeah, so if you charge a, uh, 
charge a dash or you get a throw, you will get that dragon arm until you're knocked out, like knocked down, then you lose it. But, uh, but yeah, it is super useful because you can do those crazy punches. It doesn't have to be the dragon on top of the dragon arm. You can use any arm on your left and, uh, and get that dragon. So it is really useful. And you could put something quicker on there, which is kind of maybe a better way to go. Min Min also has these kicks she can do, which deflect stuff. So if you're moving forward or backwards, make sure you're using her kicks to deflect shots. That was a pretty easy headlock there. We had people who were real aggressive and knew what they were doing. But that dragon arm is, is so good. I love having a, a permanently charged arm whenever I'm dipping around. So it is similar to Spring Man. You just don't have to be low on health. And uh, yeah, her ability to deflect stuff is really good too. So I think she's gonna overall be really strong. Even if her arms are some of the weakest by default, the dragon arm is one of the strongest arms. So it, uh, it pays to, you know, charge that up and keep that going as much as you can. All right, so Ribbon Girl, Mechanica, this is <laughs> this is her idol. She loves, she's literal idol, like she's a pop star, but Mechanica is uh, inspired by Ribbon Girl to to join the uh, the arms competition. She built her own arms mech suit so she could she could participate even though she doesn't have arms. And uh, this is her, you know, her hero. And I, I, I don't know if they haven't said anything in the lore really about it yet, but I'm, I'm wondering if Ribbon Girl is inspired by Twintel, because Twintel's a little older and is a movie star. So I do wonder if that would be a thing that they uh, they have kind of showing like, hey, even your heroes have heroes too, and they have people that inspired them. So I'd like, yeah, if they had that as a little character note. Gotta be careful as we get close, because her grabs are gonna be so fast. But with Mechanica, I mentioned, you know, she's got that super armor, and I can hover in the air to kind of keep up with a bit of Ribbon Girl's jumping ability. So we gotta be careful, because she is slower, but, oh, yeah. So yeah, throwing out both your arms, you're gonna be so vulnerable to grabs. I have to be careful about trying to do that too often. So we can get that, oh no, man. So that's a big, jeez, oh, getting in trouble here. Uh, that's a big thing that you have to be aware of with, uh, ooh, we just got knocked out, jeez. Um, trying to focus on talking can get <laughs> deadly when uh, I'm not paying enough attention to the match. But, uh, but that's a, that's a big thing. If you're using most motion controls, be careful with, you know, your little movements to punch and make sure you're not inadvertently tilting forward constantly because you can accidentally move forwards. And uh, I'd like to get a good win with Mechanica before we switch off for her. But yeah, if you're accidentally leaning a little bit too, you know, moving forwards while you're punching, then you're going to do stuff like that where you walk into hits un unintentionally. So we are going to do uh, do one more with Mechanica, then we'll switch off a bit. Twintel is the new one in this weekend's test fire. Like, they added her because of how popular she is. So maybe we'll finish up with her. But there are more on the way. If you're watching this later, definitely check those out. And again, I've got the full game, you know, preview videos up if you want to see those. This is probably a good setup because I do like having the uh, the homie missile because it does have that explosion to do pretty good damage. And you can kind of, this is a better stage, I think, for a heavier fighter because you can uh, you can really wail on them and they can't really get away from you because it's, oh, geez, because it's such a more condensed uh, battleground here. There we go, there's so many ribbon girls that it's hard to keep track of who's on my side. It's the blue one, and when I punched her, because she jumped right in front of where I was, but uh, but yeah, this uh, this stage means there's not as much room to get away, and uh, you do have to deal with oof, not being able to, uh, to kind of run and hide as much. Oh, tried to get hurt. All right, this is the time to Get the rush attack going here. They got, she's got hers as well. It's a little crazy with all this stuff going on. You can grab someone out of a grab. You can. There's just so many uh, options in team battle that you have to be aware of, or else your opponent's going to no, just completely. That is it. Man, we got wiped the floor with. The, <laughs> we kept getting in each other's way. It's a little tough when you're not coordinating because you're just playing with a random person, but. Uh, but yeah, because in because you have a teammate, you can grab someone out of the grab that they're doing. You know, like somebody else can save you from attacks, but you can also mess with them. So you have to be careful about who you're hitting and uh, who you are 
who you are uh, targeting a little bit to help your teammate out. Someone was talking about ears, the extendable ears game. I don't know if uh, <laughs> human ears never stop growing. That's a little weird. Extendable ears would be, that's the spinoff or something. Okay, Ribbon Girl. I'm going to go for something a little quicker. The Thunderbird. This person has uh, arms as their, their uh, Switch account name. But yeah, the Chilla and the Thunderbird should work well on uh, on Ribbon Girl here because I can use that to try to slow her down if I'm lucky. They're being so aggressive with me where I gotta be extra careful here. Uh, but yeah, having the extra slow down, you know, of kind of freezing them and then also shocking them should hopefully help me enough to uh, make sure that I can get her, uh, well, I don't know. They're just so, so aggressive that it's like you barely have time to react. There we go. I need to get real aggressive and get in there and try to take her out before she can do much to me. Nope, that's it. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but yeah, the uh, the fact that you can freeze them and shock them with, with Twintel's default arms, I think, is going to slow characters down enough, if you can land it, to uh, to get throws a little easier. I've noticed the more we're playing, the more, you know, Japanese players we're playing, a lot of them are adapting very, very quickly and just going in, pummel, pummel, pummel. Like, you gotta, gotta be able to adapt to faster, more aggressive players, and I'm, I've gotta change up my play style a little bit. I tend to play kind of defensively so I can think a little bit easier while I'm talking, but I think I need to switch up and, and try to use maybe a faster, faster character against some of these. I mentioned before, Ribbon Girl, I can see her being so, so popular and being the, uh, the standout person we see a lot in competitive. But, uh, but yeah, the more we play, the more I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta practice as much as I can and uh, try to keep up. The, uh, the commentary handicap can, can mess with me, but I still need to make sure, you know, I can play well even when I'm trying to focus on sharing info with you guys. And, uh, and balance that a little bit. In ranked mode, if I you know get heavy into that when the game is out, I think I'm gonna try to do stuff like uh, maybe maybe videos where I commentate less so I can really focus on getting the, uh, oops, geez, thanks for the punch. Um, <laughs> try to focus on, you know, doing better. Kind of like Splatoon where it can be helpful to really just, you know, focus on the match rather than the, uh, the talking so much because words no work good when I'm trying to fight. No. <laughs> All right, let me see if we can recover from getting hit with that special because, jeez. Another thing too I have to remember is a lot of these players might be playing with traditional controls and I'm playing with motion controls, which there's a little bit of a, uh, a uh, kind of wiggle room in, of error where if you're playing with motion controls, you might not always be able to uh, hit where you are, you know, move in the direction you necessarily want to go in. I'm going to save my rush, and then as soon as he gets up, go for that. There we go. I'm trying to flail just the right amount so I don't... Oop, see if I can grab him. Oh, nice. So Ribbon Girl did a good job of dodging out of the way. we got to hurry and get some hits in here, or we're going to lose this. Oh, get him. Come on. Ah, I got knocked out. Can Ribbon Girl finish? Nope. Man. So when you lose a part, you know, we lost our third buddy partway through, and that made Headlock that much tougher, because you got to be doing a lot of damage to, to beat this guy. But he is a tough boss, so... So anyways, uh... So, um, let's see. Uh, Emma... Emma Kos is, uh... She, they're struggling with the game, like, trying it out. They're trying to pick a good character to start. I think Ninjara might be one of the better beginner characters, just because he is so forgiving. If you're learning the game, like when you guard, he'll move out of the way automatically. He can, you know, duck and dive all over the place. He's very quick. He has fast arms. So I think he uh, he might be a better one to start out with. So if you are having trouble with the game and you want to improve by getting the base mechanic mechanics down while you're playing, then I think he might be one of the better ones to start as because he's just a little bit easier. He has some autopilot stuff where, like I mentioned, his guard is super good. At making sure that uh, that you're not taking extra damage unnecessarily, and he's very fast with his grabs and everything, so I think he's he's going to be a pretty standout character for a lot of people. I know he's popular already. He did really he did really well in terms of uh, how many people were picking him in the first bunch of test fires or test punches. I always mix up because it's you know they're following that naming scheme. But yeah, he's uh, 
He's definitely one that I could see being popular with beginners for sure because of his ease of use. Overall though, there's other characters that are a little more complicated that you can get into once you get the controls down, but I think the big the big barrier to entry with this game is, uh, for a lot of people, is going to be just getting the base controls down and everything. And I, you know, I took me a handful of matches before I, you know, got down the, uh, the basics of everything. And I, that's why I suggested in that preview, and I've said a few times, maybe if you're trying the game out for the first time and you're learning the mechanics and how to play, try out the, the traditional controls, even if the motion controls have more uh, precision with the punches. I do recommend them overall, but the, the traditional controls, you can use a control stick to learn what you're doing a little easier without having to think so much about moving around like you do with motion controls because, you know, you're tilting and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, if you're learning the game, try stick controls at first and then move to motion controls, I think is a better way to go overall. Just as, you know, my recommendation, oh, we're going against that master mummy who's so grab happy. In Skillshot, will his grabs translate to a win in this mode, though? Maybe not. We'll see. Okay, going with my actual, actual uh, favorite combo here. It's kind of like her iconic. You know, she has that big megawatt arm, but I really like the uh, the combo with the dragon on the left and the. Uh, oop, gotta look out for him. Dragon on the left and the uh, ram ram. There we go. The, uh, the thing going on with that Guardian is so creepy when you're fighting against Helix or anyone using the Guardian arm. Watching that thing move towards you can be really bizarre. You gotta block here, because that, you know, make sure you're not getting hit by those shock bombs. For sure. Oop, there, yep, there he goes. So yeah, if I was to fight that Master Mummy again, I know to look out for how many grabs he throws out, because he is just so into his grabs. But again, you know, I was able to punch and and break that, but when there's so much going on in this mode, it's going to be a little tougher to actually pull that off. Here we go. Got to get these points quick, quick, quick. They've got so many. I don't know if we're going to be able to come back from this one. Go, go, go. We need to be hitting and hitting them, and that is it. Yeah, look at that. 2,100. That's a pretty, pretty good high score for skill shot. We both managed to get a lot of points despite the craziness going on, so that that duo did really well. Look at, <laughs> Helix got 130 and the 1900 was just the Master Mummy guy. I would like to, yeah, if I could get a good battle against that Master Mummy before we finish up here, that would be a great finish. We have so many people that it's gonna, yeah, it's throwing the other Min Min against him. No, I wanted to fight him. All right, one last shot at Headlock for this stream. Thank you guys again for watching. Uh, Link is asking, will this game have a story mode? It does have a Grand Prix mode where Biff, the commentator, gives you lots of info about the uh, the character you're playing and the characters you fight against. That is basically the story mode, kind of like an arcade mode for most fighting games where you fight through a bunch of fighters and there are bosses and, uh, you know, won't spoil that type of stuff, but yeah. yeah. That is the story mode that you use to unlock ranked mode and get a bunch of coins and uh, and kind of learn the basics of the game against the computer. You get to see a bunch of the stages. And it's definitely one of the better things to start out with if you're learning. Just, you know, a lower difficulty uh, take at Grand, or run at Grand Prix is probably your best bet to, uh, to get started with the game when you're trying out and you've got the basics down. And, uh, it is, yeah, it's, it's not the deepest story mode or anything, but it does offer a lot of insight into the ARMS universe, so it is really cool to hear the, you know, different different facts about the characters, because I am interested. I like all the character designs and stuff, and I like hearing, you know, we, like, weird stuff like uh, Kid Cobra, oops, is, uh, you know, he streams his, like, snakeboarding competitions, and Min Min, she actually has a... Uh, ramen restaurant, her family ramen restaurant, Nintendo Ramen, or something, I think it's the name of it. There's little details like that, that that make the characters more, you know, interesting that you learn from playing that mode. And that that actually is set up like a tournament sort of thing, or like a television broadcast, so it feels a little more, like, you know, immersive than just random battles and stuff. I would love to get a... Uh, Min Min fight against that Master Mummy, but it's probably not going to happen. It looks like the last fight here is going to be Min Min's on Ramen Bowl, which is very, you know, this is their stage, so it makes sense. So let's try this out. I should probably... Let's, uh, I love the... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with my one combo, but 
if we go against somebody heavier, I think the uh, the heavy armed megawatt one is a better way to go sometimes. All right, we gotta be careful because a Min Min close is uh, maybe not the best to deal with here. Oop. Trying to make sure we back up enough and throw out a grab. Oh man, they're pretty good at deflecting stuff already. So gotta be extra careful. Yeah, the, the more I play the computers, the more I'm like, the, the real people you play against are so unpredictable that it can be tough to know what they are gonna do. I'm charge up my dragon arm, because she's got hers. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna be the one, the odd person out without a dragon arm charge. Oop. Getting in close with Min Min can be risky because of how slow the dragon, you know, the dragon does not recoil as fast as certain other arms. There we go. Lots of damage. This is when we want to get in there and... Nope. <laughs> I wanted that HP, but that's that's the weakness of the items where when that pops out, everyone's going to try to go for it, most likely, and it's going to be very tough to uh, to get. Oh, we're trying to get a good grab on her here. Got to look out for her rush. Nope. Did not block in time. Yeah. That is one of those, yeah, if you're playing a character with a slower arm, really do not throw that out anywhere near when they're they're getting their rush, because they'll just hit you with it. Man, the players are getting better, and it's, <laughs> I think my fatigue is already setting in from streaming multiple times, so I'm not doing as well as I would like, but I'd like to go out on a win. Let's see if we can get one to finish out here. It's a two-player match. That Min Min is uh, maybe on my side now. Okay. Let's see. I love how the bird goes nuts when I play it, yeah. So let's use the, let's do the Thunderbirds. I'm just gonna do dual Thunderbirds so we can have a crazy bird battle when we get a rush. Might not be the best strategy, but that'll, throwing out a lot of electric hits, I do think that's one of my favorite of the status effects, because then, look, we just stunned that Min Min with our electricity and made it easier, help me, um, made it easier to get the, uh, the grab, it, or you know, get that extra damage. Grabbing is typically what you want to do when your opponent's arms are broken. There we go. It sounds horrible. <laughs> Their arms are broken, you know, they're just temporarily knocked out and they'll recover pretty quickly, so you gotta be fast with that. Yeah, this Min Min is doing, doing well to help her teammate. Ooh, there we go. Oh no, I got grabbed out of a grab. And then someone, I think I got hit by my own teammate's rush a little bit there. See if we can get a grab, and then I want to finish with my rush attack. And oh man, didn't get to do it, but you can see that bird zipping around a little bit. That was what I was building up towards, but they got knocked out too fast. Smacked him with the bird, and then got the one. But they zip all over the place. We showed that a little earlier in the video. All right, let's see. Do we have one more match here, or are we gonna get booted? Let me see if we can do a final match. I'd love to do one with Mechanica, but she's a little slower. I don't know if we're going to be able to <laughs> get a match fully because we'll get booted in the middle of it as soon as it cuts off. That happened last time. And weirdly, the, the game disconnecting from the server, my computer crashed at that same time. That was why that stream ended so abruptly. So if you watched that first stream, that is why that happened. Thank you guys for watching. Please check out the other videos I mentioned if you're interested in more arms or check out other stuff on the channel. And please leave a like if you enjoyed this. I do really appreciate it. You can subscribe if you'd like as well. Server maintenance will start. So I love that, that it actually does say when it's going to start. So it is a little easier to uh, know when you should really be getting out of the uh, out of your matches and try to get, uh, you know, get out to a lobby so you don't just get booted. But we're going to really try to finish this here because after this, we got to wait for the next one. But that's in a few hours, so definitely check that out if you get the chance. I can't tell if this is one of the better ribbon girls that we've fought, but we're going to have a tough time against her. I knocked her out of the rush attack, so I think that was worth the risk. But yeah, Mechanica, because she's a little slower, you want to make sure you're careful with when you throw out hits and then maybe get a grab. This is my favorite thing to do, kind of predictable, but throwing out a grab while the, uh, the HP thing is going on to really boot them out of it before they can get much of an advantage from it. All right, got to make sure I'm charging my punches. Her hover really helps with that, though. And this, this player is really trying to stall out for the last bit of the match, so I don't know if we're going to be able to get her, but I'll do a long extended grab by tilting the Joy-Cons out, and we did it! All right, going out on a win with a perfect as well. 
Thank you guys for watching. We healed, so it counts as a perfect if you get your health back. A little cheap, but, you know, I'm glad after a couple of losses there that we did end up winning the last one. Thanks again for watching, and that is it. I think we're going to get booted before we can get in another match. So I'll see you guys next time for uh, for some more arms. We'll, will we be able to get a dunk off before we finish? Who knows? The coins, it's taunting me with all these coins we've been earning because normally you'd be able to use those in the full game to get more arms, but not so in this one. Uh, we're going to be in the middle of a hoops match, it looks like, when this server goes down. So I'm going to try my best to uh, see if we can get some dunks before we finish up. Oh, there we go. We got her. All right, from the foul line. And yeah, that's that's another one of those advantages of motion, motion controls. I can extend my grab to actually get the grab a little bit easier from a wider range than you normally would be able to. So that is definitely helpful with motion controls. You can do that with traditional controls. It's just a little a little tougher. We've only got two points here, so we can't give up the lead. But I don't know if we're going to get much time to do much else anyways. The rush will hit and get her three points. There we go. Down to the buzzer here. Will the match end, or will we... Uh, you know, get booted. We're gonna find out in a few seconds. Oh, she's got hers. Oh no, we're gonna tie up. Unless we can jump and get a grab in the last second. No, she hit me out of it. That's a draw. Who's cooler, Ribbon Girl or, or Spring Man? Probably Ribbon Girl, because Spring Man will go boing and say weird stuff like Spring a Ling. But, uh, you know, they had a draw, so we'll let you decide <laughs> who you like more. I can't believe we haven't gotten booted yet. Hmm. Well, let's go out with this weirdo and just kind of waggle around here by making noise. Thanks again, guys. I can't believe, yeah, we're still in this lobby. We have not gotten booted yet. Maybe we'll uh, we'll beat Headlock here to finish up. I, I'm very surprised they haven't kicked us out because last time I just got booted when the, the thing was over. But we'll try one more time. This is level 5 Bite and Bark Headlock which is a character that's not even in the test bunch. So you guys get to see a little bit of him. Again, if you want to see more Bite and Bark, I played a bunch of him in the previous stream, and there's a, a few matches, like a ranked mode match that I played with him in the, uh, the preview video I did. So I'm gonna, if we can kind of hang back and I can throw this stuff out from far away, then that would be good. Because yeah, we can extend and get charged hits here. If I freeze him, that's a good way to make sure my buddies can, uh, can get some good hits on him. Oh, he's kind of stuck in the corner there. I've got my rush. There we go. Lorb him. Oh man, somebody might have grabbed him at the wrong time there. The wrong time for me. And he's got his rush, so if we get hit by that, I thought that was going to be his. If we get hit by that, we're in trouble, so I do want to make sure I'm out of the way for sure. There we go. And not have my dragon extended. Oh, we're okay. It went after them. Our teammate is down. Do not let him heal. There we go. Uh, I think he yeah, Helix is a little weird where he's uh, he typically pulls someone even with a jumping grab, I think, because he like stretches on the ground so much that you gotta look out for uh, for not you know going to your opponent. Oh, okay. Getting that rush. I'm gonna try to get mine here before he can do his. There we go. A little bit more damage. We only have 15 seconds. We can do this. We can believe. Oh, come on. Trying to get the grab. Oh. <laughs> well, who knows? I'll leave it up to you. It's a Schrodinger's match. Did I? Did Helix win or did Headlock? Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time for some more arms. Goodbye.